We continue to partner and support initiatives for the enjoyment of our residents and visitors, and we invite other organizations to consider the town as a venue for their events. We thank Lieutenant Colonel David Curley, Commanding Officer of the Royal Bermuda Regiment, for once again supporting this historical event. You create the pomp and pageantry so befitting of this occasion, and we look forward to continuing this well-established tradition. We now come to the highlight of today's event, the 203rd anniversary of the Peppercorn Ceremony. In keeping with the tradition of this day, I demand of the trustees of the Earl State House to fulfill the conditions of the agreement of 1816, that the annual rent of one peppercorn be paid by the treasurer of Lord St. George to the Accountant General. And the keys to the Earl State House be given to Your Excellency for the annual meeting of Her Majesty's Cabinet to be held with Durian. I would be remiss if I did not acknowledge my family, my friends, and supporters along this journey. A big thank you to the Consulates of the Corporation of St. George for your dedication to the people of the town of St. George. Finally, thanks to the staff of the Corporation of St. George, they do a tremendous job in keeping our town operational. As Mayor and on behalf of the Consulates of the Corporation of St. George and the St. George community, I extend to Your Excellency, the Honorable Premier, Bishop of Bermuda, President of the Senate, Speaker of the House of Assembly, Minister of Home Affairs, Ministers of the Cabinet, Leader of the Opposition, Secretary to the Cabinet, Head of the Civil Service, Members of the Senate, U.S. Consul, Mayor of Hamilton, Members of Parliament, Distinguished Guests, Ladies and Gentlemen, Boys and Girls, and to all our friends and visitors here today, a warm welcome. Thank you. Your Worship, Madam Mayor, the protocol has been established, but let me take this opportunity to acknowledge your presence here and that of all the other dignitaries, including the Bishop of Bermuda, the Premier and Leader of the, of the Opposition, the President of the Senate, Mr. Speaker, and the Consul General of the United States. Let me also particularly welcome the members of the Corporation of St. George the members of Lord St. George and their fellow Freemasons, and of course the representatives of Lyme Regis, the home of Sir George Summers in the United Kingdom, but whose heart is buried here in Summers Gardens. It is an honour and privilege for me once again to make the annual state visit to St. George, the very first capital of Bermuda, and probably the oldest continuously inhabited English settlement in the North American region, with the oldest Anglican church outside of Britain and Ireland. Next year will mark the 400th anniversary of the first meeting of Bermuda's Parliament here in St. George, and we should all hold dear the democratic tradition of which that meeting was part and which remains strong on this island. In addition to St. Peter's Church, this town, like the rest of Bermuda, is a home of many different churches and indeed people of different faiths. We are fortunate that we live together with religious communities in harmony, respecting each other's beliefs. The dreadful events last month in Christchurch, New Zealand, and on Easter Sunday just past in Sri Lanka, remind us all too starkly of the importance of standing together in a spirit of tolerance. Madam Mayor, I am always pleased to visit St. George on official business for this peppercorn ceremony, at Christmas and at the other events to which the Corporation kindly invite me. But it is equally a pleasure to visit here with friends and family on a personal basis, to walk the streets, see the houses and forts, meet the friendly people of this town and enjoy all that this remarkable UNESCO World Heritage Site has to offer. My one regret, Madam Mayor, is that there is no longer an official residence for the Governor in which to come and stay. Uh, but of course, Madam Mayor, I'm open to any suggestion 
uh, you may have to once again provide an appropriate residence for the governor uh, should you and the corporation see fit. Uh, and given the traditional rivalry that exists between the two ends of the island, I know that Somerset will then be required to follow suit. <laughs> Madam Mayor, tomorrow, 25th of April, is Anzac Day, marking the first anniversary of the Gallipoli landings in the First World War, and to remember in particular those of the Australian and New Zealand Allied forces who made the ultimate sacrifice or were injured at Gallipoli. It is a place far away from Bermuda, but nonetheless connected to this town. One Anzac soldier, Private Arthur Le Grice of Auckland, is buried in St George's in the Commonwealth War Grave. So too here lies Scottish seaman Petty Officer George Sampson, who was awarded the Victoria Cross at Gallipoli for his deeds. They rest peacefully here, but St George's is not just a place of history, remarkable though that history is. It is also, as you have made clear, Madam Mayor, a place of much current and future activity, which we should rightly celebrate. One example of such activity is the good work of Lodge St George, together with their fellow lodges across Bermuda in their charitable giving. This year, the Freemasons Fund of Bermuda has given generous financial support to the Bermuda Sea Cadets, Friends of Hospice, Meals on Wheels, the Scout Association, PALS, Vision Bermuda, and Windreach. I thank the Freemasons for their charitable giving. And I wish Lord St. George well as it begins preparations to celebrate in the future the 225th anniversary of being granted a charter from the Grand Lodge of Scotland. Madam Mayor, let me also join with you in thanking the Royal Bermuda Regiment for again playing their part in this event and for the important role the regiment plays together with the Bermuda Police Service in continuing to ensure the safety and security of this island. I pay tribute to all the men and women who serve in their ranks and in our other emergency services. Their work requires much commitment and bravery for which we should all be grateful. Madam Mayor, the peppercorn rent will shortly be paid, thus allowing the Freemasons of this town to continue to use and preserve the State House. This will be the 203rd such payment, after which a meeting of the Governor's Council will be held in the State House in accordance with Section 70 of the Constitution. This will preserve the State House as a seat of government and matters of substance will be discussed at the Council. Accordingly, Madam Mayor, I ask you now to do the honour of presenting to me the members of your corporation and I thank you for the welcome you have given me this morning. Councillor Eakin McLaughlin, JP. <laughs> Councillor Elizabeth Christopher, JP. Councillor Jamie Sapsford. <laughs> Councillor Philip Seaman. <laughs> Councillor George Dowling III. One of our newest councillors, Councillor Lloyd Van Putten, JP. <laughs> and our newest councillor, Councillor Sonequa Anderson. Good 
Town Manager and Secretary of the Corporation of St. George, Ms. Kendalee Fogo. And the Mayor of Lyme Regis, Mayor Michaela. Her first time to Bermuda. Our town crier, David Friff. Your Worship, in accordance with the conditions contained in the grant of the State House to the Corporation of St. George in the year 1816 to hold it in trust for the Freemasons of Lord St. George of the Grand Lodge of Scotland in free and common sockage, I demand the payment of the annual rent of one peppercorn. Your Excellency. I call upon the worshipful master of Lord St. George to see to it that rent is paid forthwith or suffer the pains and penalties for non-fulfillment. Your Excellency, ladies and gentlemen, in order that the Freemasons of Lodge St. George continue to have, hold the old state house in free and common suckage, I demand of the treasurer to pay forthwith the annual rent of one peppercorn. Your Worship, I now require you in accordance with the established usage and customs to make the State House available to me for the purpose of holding a meeting of the Governor's Council and members of the Cabinet. Your Excellency, I hereby instruct the Master of Lord St. George to precede you to the State House with the keys to the State House. My Lord Bishop, I would be grateful if you will offer a prayer and pronounce a blessing on our meeting. Your Excellency, Mr. Premier, ladies and gentlemen, I invite you to bow your heads as we seek God's guidance and blessing upon uh, the meeting shortly to be held in the State House. Almighty God, you are the King of kings and Lords of Lords. We give you thanks for this beautiful day that we are able to gather in this place, this historic place. And we pray, Father, for all those who bear leadership and rule in these islands of Bermuda. We give you thanks for their faithful service. We pray that you would guide and protect them with wisdom, that they may lead with justice and equity. We lift up to you our Sovereign Lady Queen Elizabeth, the Governor of these islands, John Rankin, our Premier, the Honourable David Burt and his Cabinet, the Leader of the Opposition, the Honourable Craig Cannonier, and those in the House of Assembly and Senate, praying also for those in civic authority, the Mayor of the Corporation of St. George, the Right Worshipful Quinnell Francis, JP, and all those who serve in this town. We pray, Heavenly Father, that they would have a proper fear of you before them, that as they deliberate, it will be with a sense of fairness and kindness, but also with a sense of vision to guide and lead this country forward into unity and prosperity and peace. Protect them from love of power, enable them to work together, 
And we pray that you would establish and uphold us as a people of goodwill as we welcome others to these shores. May they know and experience the love that we have for one another as brothers and sisters. Divide from us all that is divisive. Prevent us from going the ways of the world, but have our eyes firmly fixed upon your goodness and your grace. In the season of Easter, we give you thanks uh, for the example of our Lord Jesus Christ in his service and also in the resurrection power that he grants to all of us who trust in him to follow in his footsteps. We also praise you today for all those who are involved uh, in associations for the common good. We remember all friendly societies, and in particular, we pray for the Lodge of St. George. We pray that at their continued work to provide succor and help to those in need, that you would prosper and unite them, that as a brotherhood they would seek to do your will, and that all of us, in our different ways, may use the gifts that you have given to each one of us to love that which is good, to serve our fellow men and women, and to build for a better community. We pray for the enduing and the guidance of your Holy Spirit, praying in the name of our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And now we pray for God's blessing. Go forth into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor everyone. Love and serve the Lord. Rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon us and remain with us now and always. Amen. After the governor and the premier depart, we will be nearing the formal conclusion of the parade. You will see um, the mayor and her mayor's carriage come up um, for her to also exit. I've, I'm almost fallen short of my promise that it would be a good parade. Um, it's been sunny so far, fingers crossed on a few moments, and I, and I think it would be a good promise.
with the guard of honor's legs now warm. Following the departure of the mayor, I believe the Royal Bermuda Regiment Guard will turn to the right and march off the parade square. Finally, the Guard of Honor will prepare to march off. And that brings a formal conclusion to today's parade. And thank you all for coming out today. First lady, you have a good afternoon. Thank you for coming out. Whatever you decide to do following the parade, please remember to be safe and have an enjoyable day.